Welcome back everyone. Today I will go over how to defeat the Putrescent Knight, which is a boss in the Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC. I'll teach you how to cheese him with a build that he's weak to. So I'll go over everything you need and then I'll go over the strategy itself for the fight. So first, as always, let's look at the resistances because this will tell us the type of build we'll need in order to defeat him. So if you look at the resistances that the Putrescent Knight has, he's immune to literally everything except Scarlet Rot. Now, keep in mind that he's also weak to Holy. However, with Holy, there's not a uh, damage that is procced from that. I tried Holy Arrows, but it honestly wasn't doing much and it's kind of annoying because he's always moving anyways, right? So then I tried a, a Scarlet Rod build and it worked like a charm because it's the only thing that uh, you can proc on him. Now you might think, how good is a Scarlet Rod build, right? Well, it's actually pretty good. And as you can see by the numbers in the resistances, it doesn't take a lot of damage for you to proc it. So you can proc it like really, really rapidly three times in a row, especially if you use the Mimic tier, which is what I did. And you can see his health bar just being deleted. So that is why we will be using Scarlet Rot to cheese at this dude. So you have two options here. You can do what you want, but personally, I would say go with exactly what I did. But there are a few weapons that actually have a Scarlet Rot to build up. Now you cannot change the Ash of War of all of these weapons, but some you can, because there is actually a Scarlet Rot Ash of War that we will use to defeat him. So you can use the Scorpion Stinger Dagger, the Ants Per Rapier, the Rotten Crystal Sword, Rotten Battle Hammer, Rotten Crystal Spear, Rotten Great Axe, Rotten Staff, Rotten Crystal Staff and the Pole Blade of the Bud, which you get from defeating Romana. So you can use these weapons if you want. However, I was using the Backhand Blades with the Poison Flower Blooms Twice Ash of War. Now, just a side note, you cannot have the Scarlet Rot Affinity on a weapon. It just doesn't exist it's a poison, so you need to use the poison affinity. But just make sure that your weapon does scale with arcane. So you can also do the occult affinity. Now the other things that you need for this build is two Scarlet Rot incantations. It's a Scarlet Rot Aeonia, which you get from defeating Melania, and the Rotten Butterflies, which you also get from defeating Romana. If you have not defeated Melania, or if you have not defeated Romana yet, I have guides on both of these bosses as well. Now to find the flower blooms twice, Ash of War, you actually need to go into like an area under the map. So the best way that I can describe it is if you have discovered the Morth runes, which you know is pretty easy to get there if you just follow the path on the map, there is a kind of a big lake or pond right north of it, so right above it. And you can see that it kind of goes into the ground, right? So you, there's a passageway there, which is where you need to go in order to go underneath. Once you get there, you'll be able to explore that area, the ancient runes base. You can go all around until you find the area that is littered with pests, like you can't miss it, right? And the Ash of War will be dropped by a teardrop a scarab. So that is how you get that. The next part that's important for this build are the talismans, of course. So there's a talisman that makes you stronger if Scarlet Rot poisoning is in the vicinity. So either it's you getting poisoned by Scarlet Rot or your opponent. And that is the Kindred of Rot's Exaltation Talisman. You want to put that on. You also want Millicent's Prostesis because you will be using the backhand blades and you can attack quickly with them, so it boosts your power a lot. And uh, you want to use the Radagon icon. I mean, it doesn't make like a massive difference to how quickly you can get the spells off, but it's still, you know, pretty useful. Because the two spells we're going to be using are very, very slow. However, part of the strategy is having the Mimic tier there, right? So they can do one of the incantations and you just will on the enemy or use the Ash of War. I also use the Jumping Talisman because the Backhand Blades does, uh, the Jumping R2 does a lot of damage. Um, it's just unfortunate that you can't proc Scarlet Rot from just hitting the enemy with your weapons, but you know, as I said, either use the Poison Affinity or use the Occult Affinity. And last but not least, 
the build stats. Now, I'm only using the soft caps for this, you know. Uh, I'm not saying you have to be specifically level 182. You can adapt this build to whatever level you are. But, you know, I highly suggest hitting those soft caps at least. So first, you want 60 Vigor. Mind, I put 30. You don't need a crap ton because you'll be using the Ash of War most of the time while your Mimic tier will be using the spells themselves. Endurance, a 35. And then, of course, the two damage types, Dexterity and Arcane. Because the weapon will be using skills with Dexterity, the backhand blades. If you're using another weapon that scales better with Strength, then obviously your damage, your 55 will be in strength and not dexterity. And arcane is at 50. Because that is specifically for the scarlet rot. Now the thing with the seal we'll be using to cast the incantations, yes it does scale with arcane because it is the dragon communion seal. However, I don't believe there is one specific seal that helps with scarlet rot build up specifically. And this one does not even though it scales with arcane. So it's not exactly important which one you use, but use the one that has the highest incant scaling value. And also make sure that all your weapons and that your seal are leveled up to the max, either plus 10 or plus 25, because that will increase your damage by a lot. The damage you do physically, the damage you do with the Ash of War, and the damage that the incantations do. It's very important that if you want to not have trouble with a boss or do the most amount of damage possible, everything needs to be leveled up to the max. Now let's look at the best armor you can wear to protect yourself from the putrescent knight's attacks. So he does frostbite with his fire, right? And frostbite is tied to the robustness value on your armor. If you look in the right hand column when you're looking through your armor, you can actually sort the armor by the resistant type. And then you go down and you find the one that has the highest value in robustness. Because this will make it harder for the boss to proc frostbite on you. So that's it for the build and everything that you need to fight him. Now let's talk about his attacks and how to avoid them and the general strategy going into the fight. So this guy is kind of freaking annoying. It gets kind of hard to track when he gets off the horse and then he starts to do hits and then the uh, horse comes in to hit you. But it's always three spins and then a delayed horse hit and then he'll start you know to do more spins as the horse is also charging up an attack. So that is why you need to summon the Mimic Tear uh, for this fight so at least he can get the aggro off you or just you know get Scarlet Rot to build up on him because actually getting the Ash of War you know it has a wind up and the range is not really really far. And this stupid friggin' boss is really hard to fight if you're right in his face. He has a stomp, he has a howl that will stun you, and he has some pretty hard hitting uh, close range attacks. But the most dangerous attack that he has is the blue fire that he sends out. And now this starts only in phase 2, and the only way that you can dodge it, not by running away from it, uh, it's not an AoE, and it's not by rolling into it like a lot of the other bosses, you actually have to jump it. Now, I didn't know that because I didn't fight them a lot, I just fought them a few times. But be aware that you need to jump the blue fire. But other than that, honestly, most of his attacks aren't that hard uh, to really deal with. It's really about knowing the timing on his slow hits, especially when he does the you know, spinning hits with the horse also charging you at the same time. Once you get the tempo down, it's pretty easy. And then making sure to jump the fire. That's really like the biggest threat to this boss. But as you can see from the fight that I actually won, it really wasn't long at all. It took me like two minutes and his health bar just melted with the combination of uh, the Mimic tier and myself using Scarlet Rot to build up. So you can either punish him uh, while the Mimic tier has the aggro with the Ash of War or with Scarlet Aeonia. Or you can punish him at the end of his attack strings as well with the Ash of War. But I honestly feel like I didn't do much in this fight. I, I'm pretty sure my Mimic tier did most of the work here. But I mean you can see that the Scarlet Rot working in combination you know, was kind of, um, kind of a killer for this boss. So if you're having trouble defeating the putrescent knight, then I hope that this build and that this strategy 
really helps you out. If you have any other tips on how to defeat this boss, put them down in the comments below. And I'm just going to be doing a friendly screenshot contest going forward. I'll try to do it like every two weeks to give people time to uh, give in their submissions. So all you need to do is just join our Discord. The link is in the description of the video and it's also on the main uh, on my main YouTube page as well. And the winner of every poll will have their screenshot featured in the video that will come out on a Saturday. On every Saturday, every two weeks, if that makes sense. <laughs> so other than that, everyone, have yourselves a wonderful day, and I'll see you all very soon.